Okay, so in this video we want to look at anti-differentiating x to the power of n where n is a rational number, so fractions, um, or decimals technically, but I uh, mostly want to work, look at working with fractions. So as you've seen, when we anti-differentiate, we often create fractions just through the process of anti-derivative. So we add one to the power and divide by the new power. So we've often got fractional coefficients when we anti-differentiate. Um, and so that can be a bit complicated if our powers are already fractions. Now I know on the worksheet that I set you a couple of lessons ago, there were a couple of square roots. So you did do a few antiderivatives with powers of half, um, but I just want to focus on those um, in isolation uh, here in this video. Um, so it doesn't, our rule for anti-differentiating x to the power of n doesn't change. It applies for all values of n except for where n is equal to negative one. And my apologies, there's a plus c missing there. Let's add that in. Um, so as long as n is not negative 1, it could be fraction, decimal, positive, negative, you know, it can be irrational as well. Um, uh, this rule applies. So we still add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. That just becomes a little more complicated than the number work of that when we're working with fractions. Um, the properties of integrals still apply. So if we're adding terms, we can simply just integrate each part separately. If it's a number times x to the power of something, the number doesn't have any effect. It just still sits there and... Um, still multiplies the integral by that number. Okay, so let's just work through some examples. So again, the challenge here is not in the anti-differentiating, it's in your fraction work being good. Okay, so we've got x to the power of 3 fifths. So you want to add 1 onto 3 fifths. So 1 is 5 fifths, 3 fifths plus 5 fifths is 8 fifths. You need to be able to do that level of fraction work in your head. And then we need to divide by that new power, so we're dividing by 8 fifths. Now when we divide by a fraction, that's, we multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by 8 fifths is the same as multiplying by 5 eighths. So this actually becomes 5x to the 8 fifths over 8. So we're multiplying by 5 eighths rather than dividing by 8 fifths. You could also write that the fraction can be completely separate. 5 eighths times x to the 8 fifths. That's the same thing. Okay. Alright, uh, example 2, x to the power of 1 third times 5x cubed plus 2x. Okay, so again, this is a product. We've got a function involving x times another function involving x. So we can't just anti-differentiate all the separate bits. We have to first expand it out so we don't have any products of functions, so any multiplication of functions. So we're not anti-differentiating yet. We're just expanding out. Um, so still, still equal to the antiderivative. We're going to do x to the power of a third times 5x to the power of 3. So it's going to be 5x, and remember when we're multiplying, we add powers. So it's 1 third plus 3. Okay. 3 is 9 thirds, so 1 third plus 9 thirds is 10 thirds. Plus 2x, and this is x to the power of 1. Um, so we add the powers, so x to the power of a third times x to the power of 1 is x to the power of 1 third plus 1. 1 is 3 thirds, 1 third plus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. Okay, so, sorry, now we want to anti-differentiate. So we're going to have 5x to the power of, now we're going to add 1 onto 10 thirds. Now 1 is 3 thirds, so it's going to be 13 thirds. And then we need to divide by the new power, so we're dividing by 13 thirds. Plus 2x to the power of, now adding 1 onto 4 thirds, 1 is 3 thirds, so 4 thirds plus 3 thirds is 7 thirds, and then we're dividing by that new power. Okay. So remember this is multiplying by 3 on 13 and multiplying by 3 on 7. If you've got 5 times 3 on 13, it's just 5, it's just 15 on 13. Okay. So it's essentially this denominator comes up here to multiply that numerator because this is what's going on there. Okay, so it's going to become, oh sorry, I raised the 5, it's going to become 15 on, sorry that's not 3, that's 13, it's going to become 15 on 13. 5 times 3 thirteenths is 15 thirteenths. So 15 thirteenths x to the power of 13 on 3 plus, now this second one we're um, dividing by 7 thirds, so we're multiplying by 3 sevenths, so we're going to have 2 times 3 sevenths, because we've already got the 2 up the top there. So that's going to be 6 sevenths. So again, you can sort of think about that's going to go up the top there. It's going to become 6 sevenths x to the power of 7 thirds plus c. 
Oh, did I forget my plus C? I think yes, I did. Plus C. Okay, question three. Uh, 4x to the negative half plus x to the negative two thirds. Okay, so don't need to do any expanding there. That's all good. So we're going to have 4x to the power of. So we want to add one onto negative half. Negative half plus one. One is two on two on two. Negative one on two plus two on two is positive one on two. And dividing by that new power. So dividing by half plus x. I'm sorry, x to the power of. So negative two thirds plus one is negative two on three plus three on three is positive 1 on 3 and we're dividing by that new power. Dividing by half is the same as multiplying by 2 so that's going to be 8x to the power of a half. Dividing by 1 third is the same as multiplying by 3 over 1 so multiplying by 3 so that's going to be 3x to the power of 1 third. Not dx sorry plus c. Okay and then here in um, example 4 we've again got a quotient division of two functions and so we must simplify before we can anti-differentiate. So again we're not going to worry about negative powers here we're just going to split this into two separate fractions. At the same time I'm going to recognize that square root of x is x to the power of a half. So this is 2x on x to the power of a half plus x to the 5 on x to the power of a half. Let's simplify each of those terms. So it's 2x to the 1 on x to the half so we know we subtract powers when we're dividing. So again, we haven't anti-differentiated, so it's still equal to the antiderivative. So uh, 1 minus a half, so that's 2x to the power of a half, plus x to the 5 on x to the half. So 5 is 10 on 2, take away 1 on 2. So this will be x to the 9 on 2. Okay, now we're in a position to anti-differentiate. So the antiderivative is 2x to the power of, we're going to add 1, so half plus 1. 1 on 2 plus 2 on 2, so it's 3 on 2, divided by that new power. Please don't go into mixed numbers. It's much harder to divide by 1 and a half than it is to divide by 3 on 2. Dividing by 1 and a half as opposed to dividing by 3 on 2, which is multiplying by 2 thirds. Okay. Um, so please stay clear of improper fractions. Uh, sorry, stay clear of mixed numbers. Stay with improper fractions. Okay, second um, term here x to the power of 9 on 2, we add 1 to the power, 1 is 2 on 2, so 9 on 2 plus 2 on 2 is 11 on 2, and then we divide by that new power, so we're dividing by 11 on 2. Dividing by 3 on 2, as I said, is the same as multiplying by 2, 2 on 3, okay? So if you've got 2 divided by 3 on 2, which is what we've got there, okay, yes, there's also the x, but we'll worry about that later, that is 2 times 2 over 3, which is 4 over 3. So once again, it's pretty much that that 2 multiplies that um, other 2 on the numerator. So we're going to get 4 thirds x to the power of 3 on 2. And then that's an 11 on 2, sorry. Um, so dividing by 11 on 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 on 11. So that's 2 on 11 times x to the power of 11 on 2 plus c. Okay, so no new rules here, just a little bit more work um, and a, a good um, testing of your fraction skills here. Um, so the work today is from exercise 20C.